Hi everyone, just give us uh, we'll, one more second here and we will get started. Perfect. Um, hi, my name is Becky Harrington Davis. I'm with Care Academy, and welcome to our webinar on caregiver recruitment and retention: three ways technology can supplement and enable your recruiting and retention strategies. I'll just go over a few housekeeping notes very quickly before we get started. This webinar is being recorded. We will send out the recording and the slide deck after the event. And um, please put any questions that you have into the Q&A, and we will address them at the end. I'd like to introduce um, our panelists today. First, we have Ashwin Choitramani. Ashwin is the Senior Demand Generation Manager at Care Academy. He spent much of his professional career working in marketing and revenue operations. Ashwin holds a degree in psychology and a master's in marketing. For Care Academy, he worked as a recruitment marketer for Jobletics, an app-based staffing solution for the food service industry. He also worked at a marketing agency where he worked on recruitment marketing for a rideshare company that served children, teens, and senior dependents. He joined the Care Academy team in 2020. And as well as digital demand creation, Ashwin was passionate about soccer, mainly through hours of playing with tactics and data on football manager simulations. He is also a lifelong Arsenal fan. And Ashwin, if you could tell us a little bit about Care Academy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, super excited to be uh, at this webinar panel today. Uh, we uh, purposely did this on one of the only two days where there are no World Cup games, as you have noticed in my bio. <laughs> so I'll talk to you guys a little bit about Care Academy. But till today, we have trained over 350,000 direct care workers, mostly professional direct care workers. Uh, we are an accessible and engaging platform for caregivers. Uh, we uh, help uh, home care and home health and agencies of any type of care, most care provided to be able to meet any state training requirements that they have. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about recruitment retention, but like we are really a platform that is used in pretty much every stage of the onboarding and recruitment cycle of direct care workers that mean recruiting, onboarding, upskilling and retaining and even measuring outcomes. Uh, so Again, really excited to talk to you all today, but there's a little bit more about Care Academy here. Uh, we have at a glance insights, external training management, advanced compliance automation, integrations with leading home care agency software, including uh, you're gonna, Adam's gonna talk in a second, but including with WellSky, uh, that is one of the uh, leading management and back office solutions that we integrate with. Uh, we also have caregiver training that's eligible for college credits. Uh, which means that if you have a caregiver that is uh, looking to get a college degree, well, through our affiliation with Southern New Hampshire University, uh, the training that you're anyways doing through Care Academy can be used for college credits at their institution. Um, and we're also uh, engaging mobile-friendly classes. All of our classes, a caregiver can take them straight from their phone. So uh, we're a platform that does all of these things. Uh, and excited. Exactly. Uh, and our second panelist is Adam White from WellSkies, the Director of Solutions Management, where he leads the strategy and delivery for well, WellSky personal care, interoperability, and partnerships. Adam has spent over a decade in the healthcare IT industry with a focus on interoperability and ecosystem relationships. He has a passion for solving healthcare challenges and opportunities to streamline workflows for better patient and provider outcomes. Adam, a true technologist, has worked with over 200 healthcare IT companies in diverse settings of healthcare and leads with a lens of end user value creation, followed by an efficient and scalable technological mindset. And Adam, if you could tell us just a little bit about WellSky. Yeah, thanks, Becky and Ashwin. I appreciate the, the time and the opportunity today. 
Uh, WellSky, we're, we're the uh, leading electronic health record platform and analytics platform in the post-acute space. We focus on a few different venues of care, home, home health, personal care, long-term care, to name a few, uh, and just really excited to, to bring a, a different perspective around uh, caregiver recruitment and, and retainment uh, today. So looking forward to the discussion. I hope, hope everybody gets a lot out of the uh, panel. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Adam. And I'm just going to jump right into our discussion here. This is a fireside chat, so we are just going to have some questions for both of our panelists, and then um, please feel free to jump in the Q&A um, whenever you think of a question, and we'll be sure to get to those um, at the end. And so jumping in here, first question we have is, what are the challenges that you see home care and home health agencies face when it comes to recruiting and retaining their staff? And are there any notable trends that you think stand out? Um, Adam, could you take that? Sure. I think you know some of the, the biggest challenges that, that I and, and, and our team see is that it's a very competitive landscape uh, when, it, when you think about uh, caregivers. So um, a lot of our personal care agencies obviously compete uh, with each other from a caregiver perspective. And then caregivers also have the opportunity to uh, explore other uh, industries for employment, such as uh, the food and beverage and hospitality market. So, uh, and I think with the, uh, the new wave of technology that allows caregivers to onboard and, and retain employment at a much faster pace, it's a lot easier for caregivers to search elsewhere and sort of move around. So I think co competition is probably one of the, the biggest challenges that, that I see uh, in this space today. Absolutely. Um, and Ashwin, can you add to that? Yeah, I, I agree with everything Adam just said. I feel like we're, we're live right now based on where our economic climate is. Uh, we're in such a competitive landscape, even for talent. But what we're also seeing is, I think we agencies need to be more efficient than they've ever been before in the past. And the only way to be able to kind of enable that is gonna be how agencies are able to use the technologies that they have access to, to be able to kind of scale those operations. Uh, which means that if you had a strategy in order to do a particular thing, how can you uh, use the tools that you're already kind of subscribed to, whether it be a WellSky, whether it be a Care Academy, in order to kind of expand on how you can be more efficient either with your hours, with your time, with how your operations are kind of set themselves out to be. So um, efficiency is gonna be the key. And I think the agencies that are gonna be the most successful during this time are gonna be the ones that are the most efficient, so. Absolutely. And when we're thinking about efficiency, a lot of agencies are looking at data and thinking about how we can, um, how we can use data most effectively. And within these technologies that agencies are using, um, what are some of the key metrics that agencies should be aware of and tracking within these systems like WellSky and Care Academy? Ashwin? Uh, yeah, I can answer that one. Um, uh, I love this question just because like we talk a lot about like what needs to be tracked and agencies can track really like a million things across all the systems that they use. But in the end of the day, what really matters are like, are you really tracking the things that are moving the needle for you? Uh, like you might be able to, to be, you might be tracking every metric as it relates to caregiver retention, but which ones are the ones that are relevant to you and which ones are the ones that are actually driving a uh, churn within your caregivers. Uh, and I think that's something that's so specific to you as an agency to be able to decide. Uh, I could probably tell you a couple of metrics that are very specific to like caregiver retention that like you should look at these three metrics and these are the three most important metrics. But that would be dishonest because in the most truthful way is that it's really dependent on what works and what doesn't work in your agency. And you kind of have to make that decision of like, these are our main three metrics. These are our main three metrics for recruitment. And these are our main whatever metrics for retention. And you might have a, a thousand metrics, but these might be kind of like your key metrics. And those are the ones that are probably the most important to you. So uh, long answer for probably like a very basic answer was, you know, it really is custom dependent on what is important to you as an agency. Absolutely. And Adam, do you have um, anything to add to that? What are some of the key metrics that agencies should be tracking? Yeah, I think one of the important points here is to ensure that 
agencies are tracking the data, um, you know, from first contact all the way to 30, 60, 90, 120 days post-employment. So there's several different gates um, around data that should be tracked. And then I think more tactically, some of the turnover rates, utilizations versus utilization versus what caregiver wants in terms of number of hours and the types of hours are some other data points that I think are pretty uh, important to track over time. And, and as Ashwin said, um, you know, agencies are going to have different focus areas in terms of what they're wanting to track. But I definitely think there's some commonalities uh, that agencies can learn from each other around as well. So very important uh, topic here, but I think starting from first contact and then through several different gates along the way are also areas to that are very important. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm getting feedback that my audio is choppy, so I'm going to turn off my video. Um, hopefully that will help. If not, I apologize. Um, but let us move along here and, and try to push through. Um, the next question I have for our panel is um, about applications and the hiring process. When new applicants are applying to agencies, what important follow-ups are necessary for the agency to help move that potential care worker through the funnel more quickly? Um, Adam, could you start us off? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is in this day and age with where technology has, has kind of become is you have to meet the caregiver where they're at. So you can't have a long and laborious um, you know, application process that's going to deter a caregiver from even, you know, starting uh, to, you know, at the application process. So meeting them where they're at is, is, is number one. It has to be quick and easy. So tell them exactly very precisely what is it that they have to do. Um, and then, you know, the, the thing that one of my colleagues says is we, we have to get better at bear hugging them through the process, whether that's within WellSky, Care Academy, et cetera. Bear hugging the caregiver through the process is, is really critical here. Um, to ensuring that, you know, you fast track the employment process. Bear hugging. I like that, Adam. Yeah. Um, and, and Ashwin, um, what are some other ways that agencies can um, bear hug the applicants through the process? I, I, I love the word bear hugging as well, uh, but I agree with what Adam said. I think, I think it's really about meeting them where they're at, uh, but also making sure that there's kind of quality where you're meeting them, uh, which is to say that, you know, you have, a certain number of touch points uh, where you kind of meet a caregiver. And I think it's really up to yourself as an administrator or an agency, uh, whatever role you have at your agency, to make sure that you are really providing 100% at, at, at pretty much every touch point. I was gonna save this for later in the webinar, but I remember this, this one webinar where uh, there was an agency uh, owner who said something along the lines of like, uh, you know, when you're kind of going through like your recruitment process, make sure you give like 90% and save 10% for later. And I was essentially saying that, you know, like make sure that at pretty much every touch point, you're providing uh, the most custom approach, but giving about 90% and saving that 10% for when they're actually kind of joined at your agency in order to like make sure there's a consistent basis of like quality that you're kind of providing. Uh, so yeah, I think meeting the mortar at and bear hugging is definitely where it's at, so. <laughs> Thanks, Ashwin. And when we're thinking about meeting them um, where they're at, how does that apply to training and the concept of pre-training before a prospective care worker is hired? Yeah, I think from like the lens of Care Academy, uh, people use us for onboarding training. Um, and uh, we do have a set number of classes that you can use for onboarding training. Uh, but I think this works best when you're really personalizing your approach, which is to say, let's say you're having a conversation with a caregiver who you're uh, working on uh, the recruitment process with, and you realize that there are a couple of key areas as it relates to caregiving that they could use some help with. And how can you customize your onboarding training to kind of focus on the key areas where help is needed? Um, and I think when you have that degree of personalization, when you're doing everything from your onboarding to recruitment. Training is something that is so, like personalization is so important when it comes to training. If you have a training curriculum that you're using for pretty much everyone, like that's good, it's a good starting point. But training works best when you have training that caters to people's individual needs. And when you're able to do that, you're really helping the person within your staff to provide better care for the people who they deserve to provide care for, so. 
Absolutely. And we have a question from the audience here. I think uh, let's take this now since it's relevant. Um, Adam, could you say more about what we mean by bear hugging through the process? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing is making sure that the caregiver understands exactly what they need to do when they need to do it um, to, you know, through the application process. So that could be, you know, a background track, background check. It could be a caregiver training. Uh, it could be a, uh, an ongoing or an initial assessment being very prescriptive around uh, what is it that they have to do and when they have to do it is, is what I really mean by bear hugging. Right. So, um, you know, that, that can look and feel a little bit differently, you know, throughout the different agencies, but I think there's definitely some common themes and uh, that can be used throughout. Absolutely. Thank you, Adam. Yep. Um, and in terms of, um, as well as, as customizing and, and bear hugging the caregiver through the process, we also know that uh, quick and efficient hiring process is very necessary, especially in this economy. Um, and Adam, how are some, what are some ways that WellSky helps agencies ensure this hiring process goes smoothly? Yeah, so you know, within WellSky Personal Care, we, we do offer an applicant tracking system um, where we have metrics that sit you know, on top of our platform to understand the steps along the way. There's con constant contact with applicants. You can set goals. Um, you can set the, tar the target number of minutes or hours to hire an applicant. So um, the other thing that we use is we, we have more of an ecosystem strategy and approach where we rely on uh, different partners through different integrations uh, to help you know, with this process. So background checks, caregiver training are two, two examples of that. But um, those are some things that, that we do to sort of you know, work the applicant through. Wonderful. And um, when during the hiring process as an agency administrator is screening applicants um, through to hiring, what are some common mistakes or oversights that can occur in that process? Um, Adam? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the big things here is just mis misaligned expectations as a whole, right? Some of the common things underneath that umbrella would be availability, right? So, how, how many hours can you work? How many hours do you want to work? Um, I think some of the other sort of uh, mis-expectations can be around qualifications, right? Um, what are you actually qualified to do from a caregiver perspective? So I'd say uh, availability and, and uh, qualifications and utilization between agency owners and caregivers are sometimes the things that uh, need to be communicated and aligned upon from the, from the jump. Absolutely. And Ashwin, um, what's your perspective on that? Uh, I agree. I think as misalignment is probably the one that is the most common, not just in our industry, but across industries, uh, where you're promising something entirely different in the recruitment process and a caregiver joins your agency and you're like, well, this is not what I signed up for. I signed up for something completely different. So um, I, th I think it's a little bit of like, how can you make sure that you're even over delivering once a caregiver kind of joins your agency? Uh, and I'm not just talking about like the under promising over delivering. It's more of like, how can you provide more uh, once someone actually kind of joins your staff full time? And I think that's a little bit in terms of how you put together your strategy of how you recruit and onboard new caregivers and making sure that within that strategy, uh, even within that 30, 60, 90, one year touch point, uh, people continuously look at their careers and the work that they're doing and the people that they work for. And they're like, wow, this is way better than I initially thought when I was kind of jumping on uh, to this agency. Um, and I think that's where, uh, that, that's, that, that's a strategic point. Uh, and it's how can you be strategic when it comes to doing things like that? Absolutely. Um, and Adam, since we were talking about hiring and then transition a little bit onto onboarding, are there um, any other ways that you would recommend to ensure an enjoyable and smooth onboarding experience? Yeah, I think the I think the first thing is trying to create a, a personal connection uh, in building a community, right? So, um, really reducing this sort of concept of a transactional, you know, employee, and really trying to bring the caregiver into the community, and then creating some sort of nurturing campaign that, uh, you know, the first ninety days that's 
uh, very programmatic in nature that you can that you can walk the caregiver through. So I think it starts one with what's the philosophy around the culture that you that you want to create with your caregivers, and then more tactically creating more of a a campaign around you know how you have touch points, uh, et cetera. Absolutely, that makes sense. Um, and Ashwin, when we're thinking about onboarding, what are some other ways um, that Care Academy can help the caregiver to have a smooth onboarding experience? Yeah, and and I love I love uh, one thing that Adam said about kind of how you automate those touch points. Uh, this in the end of the day, we're talking a little bit about how technology can help enable all these things. Uh, and once once you have that strategy put together, that's where Well Sky and Care Academy and the other different tools that you have kind of are able to create that experience to be more seamless and uh, at the same time have a degree of personalization depending on what you're doing. Uh, but one way in which kind of Care Academy and other tools that you might have can help in that onboarding experience is by making sure that, uh, and, and it's it almost sounds contradictory saying this, but how can you provide a, a solution or an onboarding experience that is kind of similar to for everyone else, making sure you have just amount of touch points while at the same time being a personal. Uh, and that does sound contradictory because you're saying, hey, you want to provide a personal experience and how can technology do that? But at the same time, you're saying, well, it needs to be a consistent experience. Uh, and, and there's ways to do that. There are tools within WellSky that can help you do that. There's tools within Care Academy that can help you do that. And it has to do with making sure that you're providing the right sort of onboarding within a WellSky or a Care Academy, but at the same time, if you feel like, hey, we can change things here for this particular caregiver, going into those tools and those technologies and doing that within there, so. Yeah, and Ashwin, I'd say, you know, one of the things that both of our organizations have done is we've created some integration for the, so that the caregiver can log into Care Academy from the, from the WellSky app, right? So. That's a that's a very tactical uh, point to to your you know some of your points there around how do you improve the caregiver experience through technology you know that, that's one way that we've that we've done that so I think that's a really good point. And I, I heard you, um, Ashwin, you were talking about being consistently personal, I think. And um, after. Um, after we're, we're speaking about the onboarding, I think that agencies need to be uh, consistently personal as well when it comes to retention. Um, and so when we're think moving forward to thinking about retention, um, we know that career laddering and recognition are some of the most important considerations when care workers are considering employment at an agency um, and, and also you know, choosing whether to stay with that agency. So what are some ways that WellSky and Care Academy can help support agencies in those efforts of career laddering and recognition? Um, Ashwin, do you wanna start there? Yeah, I can go first for this one. Um, uh, this question is obviously very dearly to Care Academy, uh, simply because uh, as I mentioned, when we're talking a little bit about Care Academy, we're the first training platform in which uh, your caregivers can take Care Academy training and get college credits at an affiliated college institution for them. Um, so, 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 so it is something that, as it relates to the question, how can you kind of build, build those career ladders? Back to what we've been saying across this uh, conversation is that you really need to create a personalized approach, which means that not everyone's career is gonna look the same and not everyone's kind of ambition uh, is gonna be the same. And how can you use the tools like Care Academy in order to upscale your direct care workforce to help them achieve the goals that they want to, right? It might be college education for some people. It might be, um, hey, how can you help me uh, upscale so I can then uh, become a CNA or something else? Uh, and I think uh, we've, we've spoken about this in previous webinars, but I think like the best agencies when uh, you're looking at upskilling your current workforce, uh, looking for ways that you can do that with the technology that you're currently using. So how can Care Academy and WellSky kind of help you do that? Uh, and I think our integration is a, is a key way that helps enable so many agencies to be able to kind of put forward uh, a way to be able to do that and Im implementing that within your strategy of uh, career laddering. Um, and I feel like Adam <laughs> is also like eager to say something, so I'm going to pass it on to him. Oh, th thanks, Ashwin. I, I think... You know, I would also echo the fact that 
different caregivers are going to have different journeys and interests in terms of career laddering. I think what agencies can do and what technology partners like WellSky and Care, Care Academy can do um, are to create uh, stars and recognition programs, right? So how do you create recognition for, for caregivers that is broadcasted out to the, to the broader, you know, caregiver network, right? So that people actually feel like they're valued um, and then offer some incentives. They can be small incentives such as Amazon gift cards, uh, grocery gift cards, et cetera, that offer that sort of intimate sort of uh, incentive or value that, um, hey, what you're doing is, is, is cared for, what you're doing is appreciated. And so I think there's some simple things there. And I think you can do some of that through uh, automated technology because these caregivers are already using our platform. So those are a few things from, from my perspective. Yeah, I can add one thing to that. I, I love what Adam said about kind of like the short-term kind of incentives, the gift cards, because I feel like there's this like, this is long-term career laddering of like, hey, what is my goal as of today? So like, what's the next step in my career? But then it's like, I also want the short-term, what are my short-term rewards for doing the work that I'm doing? And right. those really need to happen hand in hand. Absolutely. And um, follow-up question here from, from our audience. Um, could you touch on some examples of what you would utilize an incentive for? Adam, could you explain that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, being on time is, is a big, is a big one, right? Making sure that you're not, uh, delinquent or late, uh, with any of your visits. Um, uh, if you've, if you've gotten some feedback from some of the clients, right around, Hey, we really appreciated, you know, Adam as a caregiver or as Ashwin as a caregiver, um, and then maybe total number of hours work, right? So if you have some people that are overachievers and have gone above and beyond, uh, have also substituted when uh, another caregiver couldn't make a shift. I mean, those are just some tactical things that I think um, can be used for uh, incentives. But ultimately, it's you know it's up to the agencies to determine what are some of their above and beyond type of awards that they would give out and some of the criteria is that fold into that. Makes sense. Sorry, go ahead, Ashwin. I was gonna just add, depending on the type of care you provide, most agencies have some sort of surveying process. And I think tying in incentives to that almost is just another way in which you can kind of tell, uh, hey, this person's providing great care and we're hearing it throughout. Uh, how can right. we reward someone for that as well? Thank you. Um, and Ashwin, I wanted to follow up about career laddering and career pathing. Um, what are some ways that, what does that look like via training uh, and, and um, additional training for care workers to explore different career paths? Yeah, and I think uh, as it relates to like looking at different career paths, it, it, it really depends, I think, on the conversations that you as an agency kind of have with those care workers, I think uh, within Care Academy, we have the solutions to be able to kind of help with some of that career laddering. Uh, but a caregiver might say like, I might, the way that I envision my career ladder might be a little different from uh, what is provided in the technology solution that you have. So how can you kind of customize that again? Uh, how can you kind of go out of your way? Because we, we did this one survey, uh, which our data team had conducted uh, sometime earlier this year, which we promoted heavily. So if you're in part of this webinar and you've heard something about Care Academy, you've probably seen the survey. But it was a survey that essentially we surveyed about 1,500 caregivers. And uh, the results of it were out of the 1,500 caregivers, about 80-something percent of those said uh, that the, in, the decision that I would make if I were to switch from an agency to another agency would have to do with career laddering. That would be like my number one. Uh, incentive in order to kind of make that shift to another agency. Uh, we also asked another question, which was, what is the most important decision um, as it relates to staying at an agency in the long run? And it also had to do with career laddering and career upskilling. Uh, so we're hearing from caregivers that career laddering is important and uh, uh, really like the focus in order to retain and recruit is gonna be kind of focused around that, so. That makes sense. Um, I think we're, we're hearing loud and clear that, that this career laddering is something that, that caregivers want and need. Um, and going back to the idea of 
technology, uh, technology being one of the ways that you can help facilitate these recognition and um, training, how does an agency know when to decide uh, when to add new technologies? And are there some specific inflection points in the business journey of an agency where it makes most sense to consider new technology? Um, Adam? Yeah, I think, you know, one of the inflection points naturally is going to be growth, obviously with patient census. So if you go from a 25 client agency to a 200 client agency, you have to probably take a step back and look at, okay, what processes could be automated uh, throughout my throughout my my journey or my my operations, and that could be you know back office staff, that could be caregiver and client onboarding, um, it could be uh, billing and invoicing. There's several different components that play into that, but I think naturally client growth is is one area. The other thing I think that is very important here is that you actually are looking at what is the value proposition when you're looking at technology. Then you're looking at what is the desired or improved workflow, and then you dive into the, the technology specifically that is going to address, you know, one and two in that process. And that could be with uh, software that you already have, uh, that you've already purchased or that you're using today, or that may be uh, new software in the industry that you need to tie into your existing software platforms. And then finally, to maybe uh, finalize this answer, it's really around making sure that you're communicating and understanding what some of your peers in the industry are using and doing, uh, and then looking at some of the partners in the industry as well. So I know that was a lot, but I think there's a there's several different you know phases and gates to that question that um, hopefully I help provide some insight on. Thank you so much. Um, Ashwin, do you have anything to add about um, what when the ad agency should consider adding new technology? I don't have it settled perfectly. Uh, I think uh, uh, just to kind of re-say what Adam just said, uh, there's, as you're, as you're scaling, as you're growing, but even right now, uh, if you're looking to become more efficient, uh, if you have the right strategy in place, once you've figured out what that strategy is, it's worth thinking about like, okay, I'm doing X today. How can I do X more efficient? And what most agencies will find out is by implementing some sort of technology, they'll be able to do that. So uh, when we're going back to efficiency, it's uh, I can do this today, but how can I do this better? And if there's a way to do that, why wouldn't you, right? So uh, yeah, but what Adam said was lovely and <laughs> covered most of it, so. Thank you. And so uh, now I will take some more questions from our attendees here. And we have a few in the Q&A. Please, if you haven't uh, asked your question yet, uh, feel free to type that into the Q&A. Um, first question here, uh, two questions. One is, how do you deal with candidates not showing up for interviews? I know this is a, a very common problem agencies have. Uh, Adam, what's your thought on that? Can you repeat that question? Sorry. I, oh, I uh, how, do you, how do you deal with candidates not showing up for their interviews? Yeah, you know, this actually circles back to one of the, the questions that we talked about. And I think it's really being prescriptive and having those touch points where you need to meet the caregiver. So, um, you know, maybe it's a, a text message 48 hours before another text message 24 hours before asking questions yes or no to confirm that you know you're 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 able to be there for the interview right and so you'll you start seeing some of these technologies play out in your everyday living like when you go to the dentist you get a you get a notice 24 hours before when you go to a doctor you want you know you get a notice 24 hours before so i think through technology there's different ways there that um you can leverage to make sure that uh the caregivers uh, you know, meeting you where you where you have expectations uh, to ultimately get them hired through the process. That makes a lot of sense. Consistent communication. Yep. Um, thank you. And then uh, second question is, um, how do you best deal with caregivers who are glued to their phones or devices um, that it so glued to their phones or devices that it results in lost business um, or firing the caregiver, knowing that a replacement is so tough. So how can you deal with that sort of um, behavior? Adam, do you have thoughts on that? You know, I think it's, it starts with 
uh, setting your your uh, culture and your expectations up front um, and making sure that that is uh, those policies are very firm in place. Um, obviously, you know it's a very competitive market. Uh, employees have a lot of things going on, but um, I think having a foundational approach around what the expectations are uh, for employment are are critical. Um, and then having sort of you know actions when when employees and caregivers aren't meeting your expectations is another component to that as well. Makes sense. Certainly being very clear about the policies and, and well communicating um, about your policies. Um, next question is, um, would talk, going back to when we were talking about incentives, um, uh, Amber asks, would it be a good practice to let your staff know you provide those incentives or would it be better to implement those um, and when when they meet the goals? I'm gonna try answering this question. And I think it's really dependent on what goal you expect the incentive to have. Uh, if the goal is to improve your retention practices uh, and even improve maybe like the internal kind of culture i think i think having a straight line form of communication in which you're kind of com communicating every incentive is going to be really valuable uh and then the second part of that question do you mind repeating that again becky sorry i like also lost audio for a second yes um the question was uh oh the question was uh would it be better to let the caregivers know in advance about the incentive or to um to give the incentives as they meet the goals. Yeah, I think I think definitely having a straight, straight streamlined form of communication as it relates to, hey, these are already incentives that we have in place. Uh, and uh, it is through this incentive process. I think I think straightforward communication is always going to be for, regardless of the industry that you're in, going to be the, the easiest way to kind of make sure that uh, I think when we were doing that survey, like obviously career laddering was somewhere at the top, but even having like straight line communication is somewhere there where if caregivers feel like they're being communicated to uh, and they have a straight idea of like, how can I get that extra benefit or how can I be part of the career ladder? They appreciate that. So um, that's yeah. just, yep. I think here, you know, Ashwin, you hit the nail on the head. It, it kind of depends on the what the incentive is. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, if I'm an agency and I offer early wage access, I probably want to let the caregiver know that that's, that's a function that we offer out of the gate. Um, if, if you've worked uh, 50 shifts and there's this in an incentive after that, that may be something that I provide after the fact, right? And maybe that's like a, in the form of a gift card or some sort of other monetary uh, incentive. So I think it, it really depends on what the incentives are, but uh, there, to me, there's incentives to attract, and, and and then there's incentives that are kind of above and beyond um, that are beneficial for agencies. Thank you. I know that's sort of specific tactics are really helpful for folks. Um, yep. Going back to uh, another question that we have here, going back to what you were saying, Adam, about uh, caregiver um, feedback surveys, what platform do you recommend for that? What platform do we recommend for what which piece for caregiver feedback surveys um you know i think there's there's several out there in the market um there's several different players that you know play in the survey space um i'll have to circle back on on specific ones that you know we recommend okay great um next question um is how do you attract candidates interested in shorter shifts, uh, six to nine hours? Um, Brenda says, most of our recent candidates only seem to be interested in 12 to 24 hours. And Adam, I know you had been talking about um, making sure that there, there's a, a match when you're, when you're uh, recruiting. So can you talk more about that? Yeah, I think, um, up front, you know, we, we have some capabilities within our platform that um, tie in the ability to figure out which shifts and the types of shifts and uh, how many shifts, you know, caregivers want to work. But having that expectation up front is, is really critical. And then being able to broadcast those shifts and, and availability uh, to caregivers is also very 
uh, you know, compelling component to the relationship between the agency and the caregiver. And we've we've created some functionalities within WellSky, um, such as first come self serve, that offer the ability for for caregivers to to choose available shifts and open shifts that meet their criteria. Thank you. That's very helpful. And um, another question I have here is. How do you monitor constant call off when your agency is large in size? Any advice on that? Ashwin, you want to take that one first? I got to think about that. Yeah, I'm doing a little thinking as well. Um, I think was it, it was the question how do you avoid constant call off? Um, the question was how to monitor it, but I think how monitor. to avoid it would be helpful too. Yeah. I mean, it goes. It kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier: is how you monitor. Uh, you know, you can monitor that through through WellSky, and then uh, consequently, you have to be able to offer that shift in a, in a very seamless way to another caregiver to to meet the 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 goal, right? To to give the client the care they need. And so, um, think of like the Uber model, where uh, if an Uber you know can't make it, Uber quickly turns around and grabs somebody else. I think technologies uh, have to have to have that sort of capability to help the operational improvements, um, you know, for caregivers and agencies as a whole. Because we know things are going to come up. We know that uh, caregivers are going to uh, take other things. Other things are going to become a priority. So I think uh, having having technology in place to automate and redirect uh, the care is is really a, a new trend that is going to have to take place. Uh, in this industry and others as well. I think one other thing to kind of add in there is as it relates to tracking uh, the call off is also the reason of why, like why did the call off happen in the first place? Because uh, data is going to be really important in the growth of this industry and the growth of your agency and understanding what is the reason why people are calling off in the first place will help you kind of decide, okay, what can I do to ensure that this doesn't happen? Like if the reason is, okay, I have certain caregivers who, uh, are calling off because maybe the distance is too far. Maybe I add in like a gas voucher or something and I see call-offs happen less frequently than they used to. Um, so as you're monitoring the frequency of your call-offs, the why is also gonna be really important. Thank you, that makes sense. Um, and just to clarify, we have a question here. Does WellSky track leads and call-offs? Leads and call-offs? People being late. Um, yes, we do. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and another question I have here, and uh, for our attendees, if you have any more questions, um, we're getting to the bottom of our list. So now's the time if you do. Um, so the next question is going back to the idea of. Um, onboarding after and hiring and onboarding. After the initial first conversation, how would you go about getting candidates to continue with the onboarding process and getting them to complete a full application and initial assessment that we send before continuing on with the process? It seems to be tough to get them to complete these steps in a timely manner. So I know we had chatted about this a little bit before about the constant communication to, to funnel folks through the um, application and onboarding process, but uh, do either of you have any more tips on how to make sure that that happens in a timely manner? Yeah, I think consolidation of technologies is, is one thing. And what I mean by consolidation, it doesn't mean that one vendor or one technology platform has to do it all. There has to be the ability to link um, those technologies together, right? So the example I gave earlier around I'm in WellSky and I can view my training from Care, Care Academy all within sort of a single consolidated approach is, is one example. Um, another one could be, uh, you know, sending uh, client demographic data over to uh, a background check service that sends updates around, you know, is it approved, yes or no, uh, back into one system. So I think consolidation of technology in, a, in more of an integrated fashion uh, helps with that so that caregivers, um, you know, kind of feel a little bit of a reprieve uh, and don't have to jump through several different hoops through the process. And then finally, just again, back to the concise uh, in very clear uh, communication around what actually has to be achieved uh, is also very beneficial. 
Thank you. And um, Ashwin, do you have anything to add? No, nothing to add to that one. Okay, great. Um, and the, the last question or comment um, we have from the attendees here is, um, is that indeed automatically sends reminders to applicants about their interviews, um, but it doesn't seem to help in getting applicants to show up. So I think the, the comment this person is making is, um, you know, notifications or, or just sending them those reminders isn't, doesn't seem to be enough. Um, anything else to add about um, how to combat that problem? I think, I mean, I think there's a personal element here of when you're interviewing, when you have these first touch points with some of these caregivers, trying to really sift out their interest level. So kind of throw technology aside here for a second. How are, what are the questions that you're asking, you know, to help you really garner, garner whether or not this person's going to be a good candidate or not? And I think some of our agency clients have probably put a lot of time and energy into that around, you know, what are the questions we want to ask? What are the, the, the action items that we want to ask the, the caregiver at that point in time? Um, are a lot of critical strat or crucial strategies that uh, could help, you know, negate. Uh, the problem with uh, applicants not showing up or, or continuing through the process. So um, I think that's that's probably one of my perspectives there. I'll only add to that, um, you know, you can blast 100 reminders and some of them still might not show up. Uh, so it really <laughs> depends on not just kind of sending out the reminders for them to show up, but also making sure that maybe you're providing a little bit more. Maybe yeah. like even before an interview, can you provide like, hey, this is what the interview looks like. And he, this is what happens after the interview, even before the interview actually happens. Uh, and that might not work, but it's worth testing. It's worth testing and iterating and seeing there's probably a bunch of different approaches you can take even some, before someone even jumps in for an interview. And some of that might work and some of that might not. And that's kind of where you test and you iterate and you find the thing that works best for you. Yeah. And then Ashley, I think the other thing, the other thing to add to that is, uh, I like your, your comment there. It's what are the three to five bullets on what it means to work for this agency, right? And what's what do you get out of it, right? Um, you know, the app, the hourly pay, uh, flexible shifts, um, the ability to pick up additional overtime, right? Those are some other com very compelling things that um, a, a caregiver would, you know, potentially want to know. That again, it goes back to the first comment we had here. They're co we're competing with other industries, we're com competing with other companies. And so really it's about how do you provide the value that they're getting out of working in this, this relationship in a very uh, clear and concise way. So um, yeah, I think that's another good point, Ashwin. Thanks. Um, and another question about this, uh, about the, the process um, of, of the applicant's journey. Um, Jillian says, we start with a phone screening and then send out the full application link if we're moving forward. Do you think it's appropriate to give a deadline for when to send in an application? What's your perspective on, that, on setting deadlines for the parts of the process? I think it's great. I mean, I think, I think you definitely should set deadlines. It's Again, it's that prescrip prescription around uh, what is it that they have to do and, and when do you need it by, right? Because again, people are dealing with several different things. Uh, you know, this demographic and, and persona from a caregiver perspective, sometimes they can be working, you know, one to three different jobs. So the prescription in my mind around what they have to do and the timeline in which they have to do it is, is very critical in this space. That makes a lot of sense. And Adam, I have a well sky question here. Okay. Um, this specific question, is there a video training library available in WellSky to help users learn how to use the complex analytics component? Is that something you can answer now? We actually do, yes. Um, we have a, a platform called Support Hub and uh, through Support Hub, there's trainings around how to use the reporting and analytics modules that uh, we offer as a part of the standard product. Be happy to touch base with this person offline if they need more information. Wonderful. Um, thank you everyone for the engagement. And um, that's the end of the questions I have in the Q&A. And so coming up on your screen now is should be a poll. Um, 
And I will give you a minute if you could take a look at that poll for our attendees and um, let us know what you think. And while you're doing that, I will move on to our just our last couple of slides here. Um, if you are interested in starting a free trial of Care Academy, this is the uh, URL to do that. And you could also scan this on your screen, scan that QR code with your phone right on your screen um, and enter your name and we will be in touch. So thank you so much for attending this webinar. Um, if you have any other questions, I'm sure Adam or Ashwin would be happy to get back to you um, and about WellSky and Care Academy. And thank you all for your engagement and your patience with my audio. I appreciate that. Um, and we will be sending out this recording. Thanks so much. Thank Bye you all. Appreciate yeah. it.